As schools were often asked to calculate how many of our schools are persistent absentees. And by persistent absentees, the usual interpretation is that their attendance, their percentage of attendance has dropped below 90%. Now this calculation is usually done over a certain time period, i.e. the academic year to date. But several schools have been asking me how we can calculate whether a pupil has been a persistent absentee over a different time period, say the last term, uh, the last week, four weeks ago, previous academic year and, and, and time periods like that. Uh, and, and yes, it is possible to create a persistent absentee counter uh, that is flexible in terms of the time span that we want to look at. So that's what this little example is going to try and show you, how we can do that using Power BI and some simple DAX uh, formulas. So here's the measure in use. I've set up a simple matrix table here. Um, and here's our measure uh, reporting on the number of persistent absentees that are in year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, and so on. I've put a date slicer up at the top, and this is just a simple date slicer, but it works with whatever way of arranging dates you have. So whether it's, be, uh, whether it's by term or week or academic month or whatever it might be, it works in the same way. And you'll see if I change the values in this slicer, if I change the time period, uh, then the persistent absentee count changes accordingly. Um, so if I um, extend it uh, into the distant past here, uh, going back a couple of years, then over this time, you'll see the number of persistent absentees changes. The nature of this particular calculation means that the longer the time period, the fewer persistent absentees you should have over that time period. But you'll see it is quite responsive there, even to the extent that if I take the time period way back, you can see the uh, sevens here weren't in school uh, back at this back at this period. So uh, they all come up as persistent absentees. They weren't actually in school. So their attendance is uh, below 90 percent. So you see, it's a very responsive figure. It works relatively straightforwardly. Um, and in fact, uh, making it making it res responsive is purely achieved by making sure these are all measures. If we use calculated columns in this context, uh, these calculations aren't flexible enough. So we need to use measures here rather than calculated columns. So let's have a look at the measures that we're using. Here's the measure. I've called it count persistent absentees over time. Um, and it's a it's a simple sum x uh, calculation. Um, if you remember, sum x operates uh, on a row by row basis on a specific on a specified table. So I've asked the sum x command to look down the pupils table. So for every single pupil in the pupils table, it will look at it will calculate um, the percentage attendance. And if the percentage attendance is below ninety percent. So there's the 90% there. Remember, we have to have it in the range 0 to 1, but that's 90%. Then it counts them as one pupil. In other, in, in other circumstances, i.e. if it's greater than 90%, uh, it counts 0. So we're going to end up, effectively, with a little table that's got 1s and zeros in for every pupil. And it's going to work out whether they are persistent absentees. Now, because of the way measures work, and because we have set up our percentage attendance uh, uh, um, calculation again as a measure. So again here, percentage attendance needs to be a measure. Um, because we've done that, because we've got a date table that's linked um, to the attendance date, so the mark dates, then Power BI is going to do all the heavy lifting on here. Power BI is going to work out exactly which attendance marks to use, depending on the values that I choose in the slicer. So that's all that this calculation is doing. It's just a sum x command, which if you remember, iterates, as they call it, that means goes row by row down the pupils table. So for every pupil in the pupils table, it's going to go down that pupil table and it's going to uh, work out whether the percentage of attendance of that pupil is below below 90%. If it is below 90%, it counts one pupil. If it's not below 90%, it counts to zero. Uh, towards the counter. And because um, because of our date table, like I say, working in the background here, um, it's automatically pre-filtering the calculation, if you like, so that it's only looking at marks that are in these date, date ranges here that I'm setting 
by changing in this case the slices on here. Now it doesn't have to be a slice. It doesn't have to be a slice. So in this format, we could have chosen a slice in any format we want, whether it's a drop down, or a drop, or a, a checkbox, or whatever it might be. This works with date table so long as you have got the date table in there. So once we've counted up, so that's that's creating this column here. And once we've counted up the number of persistent absentees over whatever time period we have uh, within here, if I reduce the time period right down, you probably find that the number of persistent absentees goes up. There we go, looking at it over a very short period of time there, just three months. You'd expect to see more persistent absentees over a short period of time like that. Once we've counted the number of persistent absentees that we have in a given time period, it's always useful to be able to express that as, as a percentage as well. Um, so what we've done here is I've put a measure in here, which just counts up how many persistent absentees we have divided by the total number of pupils. Uh, in this particular case, we have 160 pupils in, in year seven, but there is a scenario in which um, you might want to think about this calculation in a bit more detail. I'll show you why. Let's have a quick look at the way I've set up the calculation here to calculate this as a percentage. So here's the column that shows a percentage. Here's the formula that I've put in. So you can see there, it is just a simple um a percentage calculation where we put the count of persistent absentees over time but I've divided it here by a count of the pupils in the attendance table because don't forget what can happen as, as, as time goes by is we have leavers from school um, so if I use um, this count here the number of pupils who are currently in this year group if I use that uh, in this part of the of the calculation as the uh, denominator in this part of the calculation, then it's possible that I will get the wrong answer, or at least an answer that is slightly out by one or two pupils. So what I've done is I've created a measure called count pupils in attendance table. Uh, and if I just show you how that's been set up, um, I'll just find it here. So I've set up this measure called count pupils in attendance table. Um, really, I've called it I've called it this to distinguish it from count of pupils. Count of pupils will just do a count rows formula on the number of rows in the pupil table. However, this one is doing a distinct count on the actual external IDs in the attendance marks table. If you remember, external IDs are unique pupil identifiers. There is one and only one for every pupil. If you recall as well, the structure of the attendance marks table for every pupil, there'll be many, many marks. So what we're asking uh, DAX to do here is just count up how many instances of a unique external ID there are in this particular table. And this is another way of counting the, the number of pupils, but it will include pupils who have perhaps left school, whose marks were registered in the system, whose attendance marks are therefore in that attendance marks file, but they've subsequently left school. So if you've got a highly mobile pupil population, this will be a more accurate way of counting your percentage, uh, your percentage of persistent absentees over time. Unless, of course, you want to define this calculation as being based entirely on current pupils. Well, that's up to you. But just be aware, this is perhaps a, a different way of, of generating uh, the results. So like I say, once we've calculated that, um, then it's relatively straightforward to use that figure in the percentage calculation. And there's an example of the percentage calculation here, just dividing one by the other, formatting it as a percentage there. And that gives us this figure down the side. And like I say, this is a really flexible, easy to use way of calculating uh, persistent absentees over any time period that you might want to choose.